Hey, Daniel Bach here from jumpscience.com. We're talking about the length tension curve of muscle. All right, so here we have tension versus length. This parabola here is what we call active tension. It's a product of the contractile components of your muscles. All right, uh, this curve over here is what we call passive tension. It's a product of the non-contractile components that comes from uh, when those components start to stretch. All right, and then this curve here is the total tension, okay, it's the sum of the active and passive. Now, when it comes to strength training, the general consensus is that we want to use a range of motion that lengthens muscles enough that they can produce a lot of active tension, okay, but that we probably don't need to stretch them out so far over here where we're losing active tension and gaining more passive, all right? Now, I would just say that passive tension is not a bad thing. Uh, we get it all the time when we stretch, but it is probably true that we don't need to strength train at muscle lengths out here. All right, so the question is, what kind of joint positions can we associate with these different muscle lengths? All right, so let's talk about squatting and knee flexion and the length of the quadriceps. I have seen it suggested that in full knee flexion, uh, the quadriceps are at a length out here where they're losing active tension and gaining more passive. I've even seen it suggested that at 90 degrees, the quadriceps are at that type of length. Okay, now that is not true, and I can prove it to you very easily. So here we're looking at my knee in full flexion. Now, my shin is hanging down uh, fairly close to vertical here, it's not even horizontal, which means gravity doesn't even have that much of a moment arm to pull my shin down right now. Okay, and in spite of that, if I relax, my lower leg just hangs there. Okay. It sits in full flexion. Now that tells me that my quadriceps muscles uh, don't even have enough passive tension in them to hold up my lower leg right now. Okay, so there's very little passive tension, if any. Uh, on the contrary, if I choose to use active tension, I can extend my knee very easily. In fact, I could probably you know, put a 100 pound kettlebell on my foot and still extend my knee. So that means I can get a lot of active tension in full knee flexion. So in full knee flexion, my quadriceps have minimal passive tension and a lot of active tension. Okay, I cannot possibly be operating over here on this curve. All right, realistically, I'm probably operating uh, near the peak active tension up here. So if I do a deep squat into full knee flexion, I'm going to get a lot of muscle tension from that. All right, if I only go to 90 degrees or some higher partial squat, that means I'm going to be operating over here somewhere with a lower level of muscle tension. All right? Now that means that deep squatting is a superior structural strength stimulus. All right? And that's not up for debate. Now, uh, structural strength is not the only factor that you should consider when choosing the range of motion in your squat or in any strength training. Okay? But if we are going to talk about structural strength, deep squats are superior. All right? That's just a fact.